Today, after 20 years of collaboration, of research and recovery efforts, we are proud to finally announce the recovery of the Louisiana black bear. With today's announcement, we're going to start the process of removing the Louisiana black bear from the United States threatened and endangered species list. Now, this great announcement highlights vital steps that many folks have taken together to protect such an iconic symbol of our great state. I'm proud of all the people that have worked so hard to get us to today's announcement. For more than 20 years, the state has worked with federal and local wildlife authorities, private landowners, and others. They've worked tirelessly to implement several measures to help protect and restore many of the black bear's key habitats. These include research tools like habitat restoration planning maps, where state and federal wildlife and fisheries officials mapped out specific areas for the bear that were in need of support. Then the LDWF and their federal partners worked to conserve these areas to improve the habitat they allowed the black bear to thrive in those areas. Because of these efforts, 48 adult female bears with 104 cubs were able to be transferred to east central Louisiana to promote breeding and expansion of the black bear species. This project has been an overwhelming success. Now second and third generation cubs are being documented in this area. I'll tell you, my wife and our young kids some years ago had a chance to go and witness one of these relocations, one of these transfers, and it is exciting indeed to be standing here years later to see the results of those transfers and the, these efforts. LDWF also focused on educating the public about bears and their associated protections under the Endangered Species Act. Outreach and education efforts by the department continues to focus on the black bear and public safety. This includes school day presentations, teacher workshops, hunter education courses, and website information offering tips on bear encounters and how to handle them. I want to thank our federal partners. We wouldn't be here without them. The state has invested more than $900,000 to help support the restoration of the black bear population. Of this total, I want to thank the people of Louisiana. The black bear license plate program of that total helped provide more than $225,000 in black bear habitat improvement around the state. So I want to thank folks in Louisiana that have contributed their own dollars to help today's announcement become a reality. We combined those investments with our federal partners, and that's $2.4 million towards black bear recovery efforts right here in our state. In our state. These efforts have been instrumental in stabilizing, increasing breeding subpopulations throughout our state, and they've helped to reduce the threat of future habitat loss. The department and their numerous state and federal partners have devoted years of field work and research to bring us to this day. I want to congratu congratulate them on this huge accomplishment. Another key factor in this project were the private landowners. They maintained or improved the black bear habitat. We want to thank them for their support as well. We wouldn't be here without their support. These important steps have increased the black bear population in our state and restored the species to its unique niche in Louisiana's ecosystem. Critical, critical efforts like these continue to improve and maintain the valuable wildlife habitats of our state every day. Over the last 10 years, Louisiana has been able to preserve more than one and a half million acres of wildlife management areas and refuges. Our Agents and biologists at Wildlife and Fisheries remain dedicated to sustaining more of our native wildlife areas in the future. Now, this is an impressive track record. In species recovery efforts, it includes the brown pelican, the bald eagle, the American alligator, and now, today, the Louisiana black bear. Even as we stand here, their biologists are also working on an important whooping crane repopulation project in the marshes of southwest Louisiana. Because of vital projects like these, our people and visitors to our state are able to enjoy many kinds of fish and wildlife species that make getting out in the great outdoors something to remember. To all the partners who worked with Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries to accomplish these wildlife protection goals, keep up the great work. Today is a great announcement. It is not going to be the last announcement, I predict. The recovery of the Louisiana black bear is an exciting and encouraging announcement for our state, for our country. We're not going to stop working on conservation efforts so that we can make more wildlife announcements like this in the future. Thanks to the collaborative partnerships of these recovery teams, we're confident the black bear is here to stay and will remain a celebrated part of Louisiana for many years to come. Close with two final observations. One is the father of young kids. It is This is an exciting day for Louisiana. This is really about being good stewards of our state and what we leave behind to our children and grandchildren. So today's announcement of the recovery of the Louisiana black bear is a great step for our state for future generations. And finally, let me close where I started. 
we wouldn't be here without tremendous partnerships. You saw federal, state, local agencies, you saw private landowners. And again, there are a team of biologists and others that have worked many, many years to make this announcement happen. They're the ones that deserve our thanks. I am grateful for their hard work in today's accomplishment. With that, I want to give a very, and I say warm, it has a double meaning. I want to say, give a very warm welcome to the deputy director who's come all the way down here from U.S. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Services. Please help Steve, welcome Steve Gurton as he comes up. And after him, you'll hear from Robert Barham. And then finally, uh, Ted Roosevelt the fourth will, will close our, our press conference. So please give a warm Louisiana welcome to Steve as he come up, uh, comes up here to give his remarks. Thank you so much, Governor. Governor Jindal, thank you for hosting this milestone announcement. It's a pleasure to be here with so many dedicated organizations and conservationists who have made this day possible. And I'm extraordinarily privileged to be able to announce the recovery and proposed listing of the Louisiana black bear. Since the bear was first protected under the Endangered Species Act in 1992, we've made considerable progress toward recovering the species. And as the governor talked about so eloquently, what we're really talking about here today is the power of partnerships, the power of a shared vision for conservation. And all of the leaders from various conservation groups here today and all of the many other landowners and others have made this day possible. And this hard work has paid off. The three original breeding subpopulations present at listing are now stable or increasing. A fourth breeding subpopulation has been established in north central Louisiana. And there are now three new breeding subpopulations forming naturally in Mississippi, where in 1992 we had none. While these numbers are exciting, habitat loss has always been the biggest threat to the bear and the biggest impediment to its recovery. And recognizing that fact, all the partners gathered here today have exerted enormous leadership and on the ground hard work using habitat restoration planning maps to get us where we are today. The strategic use of habitat conservation has enabled us to increase the number of habitat acres dedicated toward Louisiana brown bear utilization from about 300,000 acres to well over 1.8 million acres. Part of our National Wildlife Refuge System has been an anchor of that larger effort. At the same time, we've really focused on increasing the ability for these animals to move across the landscape through connectivity and crucial corridors for them to make sure we have the biological diversity we need by these animals connecting with each other. Other threats that cause the bear's listing have also been eliminated or reduced and will continue to be managed by existing regulatory mechanisms. These accomplishments have enabled us, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and our partners, after a thorough status review, to conclude that the Louisiana black bear population as a whole no longer faces extinction over the next 100 years. That's why we're proposing to remove Endangered Species Act protections for the bear and return full management to state wildlife professionals. To ensure that we base our final decision on the best information available, we'll be opening a public comment period to allow interested stakeholders to provide information for us to consider. We're confident that habitat restoration, protection, and management actions will continue, and we'll continue monitoring the population with our partners to make sure that happens. This is obviously a wonderful day in Louisiana. Uh, you'll forgive the local uh, connectivity, but I feel a lot like Paul Maneri today. I am the <laughs> luckiest guy in the world to coach a championship team. You've heard many of the names of the folks at Wildlife and Fisheries that are responsible for this, including Maria Davidson and um, others that have played such a big part. And it was mentioned, and it's so true, this is an effort that took everyone, and it was a cooperative effort. I was talking to Cindy Donner, the regional director, and now I can take my reminder off my calendar to call her every Monday morning. <laughs> For eight years, literally, I have talked to her almost weekly, and never was a conversation that we didn't talk about the black bear. What I told her is, you tell us what we have to do, need to do, and I'll get it done. And we have worked hand in hand. She's continued that connectivity, if you will. And so the results of that cooperation is here today. Um, the names, as I say, have been mentioned of those primarily responsible. I'm just lucky enough to be associated with this wonderful team. 
the person I think we all wanted to hear today, the, the black bear, you cannot mention conservation in America without referring to the Roosevelt family and especially the Louisiana black bear. This is the teddy bear. And this iconic emblem of America's wildness and the pet, the favorite stuffed animal of millions of children around the world, they can go to sleep at night cuddling their teddy bear assured that that bear will be here in Louisiana for their grandchildren and generations to come. Mr. Roosevelt has honored us by being here He's the director of um, uh, financial loans in the uh, world of banking at Barclay Bank. He is a trustee of the Museum of Natural History in New York. I understand he's skipping the trustee meeting so that he could be here with us today. I'm doubly proud of him too. I, I, I found out some of you may or may not know. He was a Navy SEAL with two tours in Vietnam. We are honored to have Theodore Roosevelt the fourth here to help us celebrate the recovery of the teddy bear. Well, what a pleasure it is to be here. Governor, uh, Deputy Secretary, uh, Secretary Barnum, uh, I'm gonna put part of my speech down here. It's too hot out here. Uh, but it is such a pleasure to be here with you all in the sportsman's paradise of the United States to celebrate the recovery of the Louisiana black bear. And to some extent, this outcome is the result of one of the great hunting stories in America. While he was president, Roosevelt fell in love with the idea of hunting bear on horseback, hard through the canebrake, following hound and horn. The writings of a noted hunter, Wade Hampton, made a singular impression on him when he finally got the opportunity to go on a serious hunt, hopefully with a few people, as he wrote to a friend, as a rule when I go hunting, I do not like to take more than one person with me because when I hunt, I hunt. His first trip was organized in great secrecy so the president would be able to hunt without interruption. An ex-slave, a remarkable man, Holt Collier, was the guide and the person who did the serious work putting the trails through the cane break. Uh, uh, and he was considered the Daniel Boone of his era and he was immensely respected for his knowledge and prowess as a hunter of bear. Collier selected an area between the uh, uh, Big and Little Sunflower Rivers because as he explained, it was kind of wild in there because nobody lived there. Once the hunt started, Collier, uh, Roosevelt said, he was not to be referred to as president, call me Colonel. T.R. told Collier he fully expected to see a bear on the first day. In fact, T.R. said he was bound to see a bear on the first day. Nothing Holt could say would dissuade him that he would be lucky if he saw a bear that first day. And T.R. insisted, so finally, Holt said, well, I guess I'm gonna to have to put my lariat on the bear. Well, that provoked a lot of laughter and a skeptical look from TR. Only Leroy Percy remarked, if Holt says he's gonna do something, he does it. TR's hosts were timid and insisted that he stay in a stationary blind while Collier would drive the bear to drop by him. Collier put TR in what a place that he thought would be good, and TR was to stay there until he drove the bear by. Roosevelt with Huger Lee uh, Foote, the grandfather of the great Civil War historian Shelby Foote. Well, time went by, the hounds got further and further away, the sound got fainter and fainter, they couldn't hear the horns, and finally Huger said to T.R., you know, it's noon now, maybe we ought to go back and get lunch. I'm sure that was welcomed with enthusiasm by the old lion. Uh, sure enough, Holt started driving the bear by the, the stand, and when the bear got there, he heard no shots. He was sorely disappointed. And uh, he goes up there and uh, his dogs jump the bear. And Holt then uh, jumps out into the water with the bear and says, let go of my dog. He then hits the bear with his rifle with a butt, stuns it, um, and it was too late. The dog was dead. Holt was faced with a quandary. He didn't want to kill the bear, but he didn't want to let it go. So he yells to his friends on the bank, get me my lariat. Nobody wanted to get in that mayhem. So Holt wades ashore, gets his lariat, and sure enough, he puts it around the bear, ties it up to a tree. By that time, the old lion comes along, and his host is saying, shoot the bear. Holt whispers to him, no, it's tied up. So T.R. raises his hand and said, no magazine bear for me. Everybody laughs. 
that was all Clifford Bear me need to create one of the great cartoons uh, of American uh, political history, and it launched the teddy bear. Um, within a few weeks of T.R. returning to the White House, a toy maker in Brooklyn, uh, Morris Mishtam, wrote him a letter and said, Would it, could I have your permission to name a little stuffed teddy bear? Could I call it a teddy bear after you? Roosevelt wrote back, I'm sure very disingenuously, and said, of course you're welcome to do so, but I can't imagine how that would help you sell teddy bears. <laughs> Um, so T.R. returns for another hunt in 2007, and um, Holt was again put in charge of the hunt, but this time Holt says to the host, just let Teddy follow me, and with one of you, he can do anything you can do. T.R. was ecstatic. He was going to actually be able to go on horseback. He wouldn't be behind a stand just sitting, and they follow the uh, hounds, and then they can hear the bear coming back, and he was with uh, Clive... Uh, 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 Metcalf, and they go back and forth through the swamp, through the, through the, and they finally interpret where they think the bear's likely to come out. T.R.'s down on one knee, and he looks and looks, and then he begins to see where the bear is, and as if sensing where the old lion was, the bear turns broadside, T.R. fires through the cane brake, he shots true, the shot goes through both lungs, uh, and then the dogs approach the bear, T.R.'s terrified that the bear may do more damage to him. He runs up and puts a shot uh, right in its neck, and the bear is dead. The old lion is delighted. Harley Metcalf comes up, one of his hosts. T.R. pulls him off the horse and said, this is a great hunt. I'm so happy to hear. On his return to Washington, T.R. Uh, sends Clive and Harley Metcalf and Holt Collier, each a 45 70 1886 Winchester rifle, lever-action rifle. Later, he gives a dinner in the state dining room for his hosts, which the press labels Teddy Bear Dinner, and he invites Holt Collier. Holt declines, saying, I didn't have any friends in Washington, and I couldn't hunt there anyway. <laughs> T.R. describes the dinner this way. There was one feast at the White House that stand above all others in memory. This was the Bear Hunter's Dinner. I'd been treated so kindly by my friends on these hunts, and they were such fine fellows men of whom I'm proud to think of as Americans. I succeeded in having 20 or 30 of them as good hunters, as daring writers, as first-class citizens as could be found anywhere. No finer set of guests ever sat at meat in the White House, and among other game on the table was a black bear contributed by one of the guests. Governor, your administration and the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, working with many other organizations, including the U.S. Department of Fish and Wildlife Service, um, Natural Resources Conservation Service, U.S. Geological Service, the Black Bear Conservation Coalition, and private and corporate land landowners to change land management techniques to enhance black bear habitat. And I really want to salute the landowners for their work in this successful uh, delisting. And if you look at what's happened here, this is collaboration, and when we collaborate, we as a nation can get mighty things done. So I hope that Louisiana will export its knowledge to other states. And I particularly hope, maybe, just maybe, we can export it to the U.S. Congress. <clears throat> now, Governor, since both you and I are members of the same party, I hope I can count on you to use a long lariat to rope in members of our party for reasons that I do not understand, do not support conservation policies. And finally, what I'd like to do is, uh, let me just show to the, uh, uh, audience. Here is a reproduction of that famous cartoon, and I'd like to give one to you, Governor. Oh, thank you. I'm honored to have it. Another to you.